when I first started carving, we didn't work in a freezer. It basically, it was like you worked on the back dock or you worked in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, and, you, and the ice was melting as you carved it, you know, and um, it wasn't until years later um, that the father of the current way we do it, Mark Gonkis, I met with him. I met him in Atlanta by chance. And he was working in the freezer. And he told me, he's like, you guys work on a dock. We'll never get any better. And uh, so I kind of was bud looking at him and me and this guy Lex kind of like going, this guy's good. And he's the first American to ever go to Japan and win their title. title. And so from that point on, it kind of like shifted. And then we started working kind of in the freezer. So, you know. But the tools, everything we have stays in the freezer. You don't take them in, you don't take them out. So they won't say stay frozen, you want to leave them frozen. You, know, you don't want to take it in your rust when you pull them out. So everything's in there, it stays in there. And then that's pretty much it, except for my saws. I'm bringing the saws out, except for the big saws. You know. I already did it, started, started, and already melted. So yeah, I fill this with regular water, or filter water. I got to filter that, so mm -hmm. the water's filtered. And then I fill it with um, regular, with the with the water, and then put ice in there to help cool the water down fast. It, it, it'll start freezing. It, it, it won't start. It won't be frozen today, but it'll start today. It'll start from the bottom and it'll slowly come up. The uh, takes three days to bake the block. Yeah, it stays relatively cool in here. I've got a big freezer right there, and this is the other freezer. Other, other. Uh, I got blocks, and that's what I got to pull out. These are the blocks right here. Got to pull these out sometime today, probably. I get finished when I, I got a lot to do. Mother's Ice, Mother's Day, and everything coming up. So busy, busy, busy. So that's those. These pumps are actually they circulate the water mm -hmm. while it's freezing. <laughs> Mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. They circulate the water as it's freezing. And so it, it's the, all the impurities, see yeah, yeah, that's kind of cloudy on top. Mm -hmm. That'll come out. And then when I take it down, I slice it, I'll get it perfectly clear. You know, everything from basically there down is all crystal clear. Mm -hmm. Got all my tools in here. I run it at about 15 degrees. And these are the block device. Once I pull it out, these are the block. I lift it out. I lift it out of the machine. I got a hoist over there. When you freeze it in there, you freeze these, these clips. I'll show you in a second. And then you just hook the hoist to it, and you hoist the whole block up. And it comes up. And I lay it down, and I cut off all the rough stuff. I get these crystal clear blocks. This table was a lift, and it goes up and down. Oh. So I'll just lay it down on that and lift it up and move it around. Or I'll, I'll bring my saw in here. I got I got several saws. I'll bring the saws in here. And uh, they're already kind of hooked up to these lumber mills. This one here is set for like 10 inches. So it, it once I take it out of that block, it's usually about 14 inches, uh, trim it down to 10. And this here said that right now I got this some set on like two. So I, I do ice cubes for businesses too. I do ice for Bishop Gas, and also mm -hmm. on the other side, I do ice cubes for bars downtown. So I cut this in little small slabs and, and on this machine, on this, on this, on this setting here. That's kind of on, a, that's kind of on a small setting. That's on a two and a half inch setting. So. Um, and that's what it's going to go on defrost down. I do quite a bit of cubes for um, some restaurants downtown and bars downtown. So that keeps me busy too. Between cutting ice at Bishop Baston and cutting my cubes and working a 50 hour work week, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> How many uh, weeks will those cubes last? That's one week. Each week? That, that's about, uh, I think I probably got about 600 maybe there. You know, that's about a week. Uh -huh. Yeah, so they go pretty quick. <laughs> the kids are pretty busy.
my days off are between cutting grass and washing clothes. I'm in here cutting ice. <laughs> well, That's my life. I know. I gotta stay pretty warm, you know. Uh -huh. um, I wear boots. This is what I wear. These have been to Alaska with me in like the past four or five years. I wear these, mm -hmm. this, and um, these muck boots keep my feet pretty warm in this jacket. And of course, headgear. <laughs> You know, headgear and eye protection and gloves. I got a little glove warmer that, you know, keeps my gloves warm and I get change it, come change my gloves out. And of course, I got to have my music, have my iTunes on. You got to get my little world in there and just carve away. It's empty right now, but I'm going to soon have it full of ice carvings because I work, I work in that one. Uh -huh. Oh, this is where you storm. I work in that one, yeah, and this is where I storm. So I tell everybody... When you carve wood, you get sawdust. When I carve ice carvings, I get snow. So when I'm carving, it, it snow just falls and everything. So I put, I don't like all that snow on. So I put them all on here. I'll clean them all up, wrap them, and put them in here so they get out of the way and they stay safe. Because in there, you see, it's kind of small. I don't have a lot of them. So, so this know, versus wood. Wood right? is difficult. Um, wood is not as forgiving as ice. Ice will break, yes, you know, but there's no kickback in ice. And wood just kick back. The tip of the salt will come back and get you. And ice is really not any kickback in it. You gotta be careful, yes, all the time. But, you know, and primarily, I actually don't use chainsaw that much. The chainsaw basically mm -hmm. splits the block mm -hmm. and I make a smaller block. Then once I get in a smaller block, it's on my die grinders. You know, you see how these. This is a very expensive, specialized bit that's made just for ice. It's got a lot of power, a lot of power. And I use this, cut, I plunge into it, then I trace out what I'm doing, and this is continually deeper. And um, I, this one here, I do a lot of my lettering, a smaller bit. Um, need it for doing like detail and waves or whatever I want to do. Um, bubble bit for making bubbles and things like that. Then just use that sander quite a bit. And of course the chainsaw, like I said, it stays, it stays in the freezer. It doesn't come out. They, they said something about taking a, a, a part off of the the blade of the chainsaw so that the ice didn't build up in it. I basically, I modify all the chains. Uh -huh. See, between these chains and a regular chain, they're like little kickback mm -hmm. pieces to keep the chain from kicking back. Uh -huh. But since it's not a lot of kickback in ice, I grind all those kickback things off. So you have just the teeth sticking up. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it doesn't, it, it, it just, it really bites. <laughs> it really bites and cuts really well. Those kickback things have a tendency to want to pop the ice up and doesn't want to dig as deep, but you cut them. It's one of the first things I do. When I buy a chain, I'll cut all the kickback things off. I don't know if I got any if you kickback okay. part or not. See, I cut all this, I cut them flat. See, they, they'll have, you can see where I sanded it down right there. They'll have that little things up there that, are, that it's almost like a depth gauge and it keeps the chain from going in too deep, too fast. But I, I, mod, I get on my, I get my die grinder and, zip, 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 and I, I cut all those off, so the chain is just a pure chain. Makes a big difference. Big difference. You're, you got your artwork, but you also got all the printing and the logos and the beautiful. Uh, I, know, draw, Thanksgiving I draw. I so draw all forth. that out. I just what I was doing this morning before you came in. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, I have a. Uh, it's called an opaque projector. Okay, it's not an overhead. It's an opaque. And so what I'll do is I'll get the image that I want or the lettering that I want and I draw them all out. These are just like block letters. Like here's the this one there. This would be it's gonna be the thank you mom, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's just gonna be that's a that's gonna be a half a <laughs> that's gonna be a half a block ice. So I'll cut the I'll cut that down to a five inch slab and then I'll put this down on top of the ice. Like that's the ice. I'll put this down on the ice. Then I'll wet it 
and I'll freeze that to the ice. Then I get my die grinders and I'll trace it all out. <clears throat> I'll trace it all out and take the paper off and I'll cut it out. And then once all that's hollowed out, I'll take the snow, pack all the lettering <clears throat> with the snow, sand it down real good, and then wet it with water from this, from the, cause the water's really cold in here and it, it'll freeze. And once it freezes, I'll sand it down and stand it up. And that's how you get the, the logos and the ice. How much of those blocks of ice weigh? About 300 pounds. 300 Yeah. Pounds. They're probably a little heavier when they come out of here. Mm -hmm. But once I trim them, they, they come down to be about 300 pounds. Jeez. I do a little homework. My cut sheet is my is my sheet that I'm cutting for fish or gas. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, uh, do my seafood rounds. I'm going to do a thank you mom with a base, a mom with a base, a mom line of blocks, and then a mom that says mom. Mom upside down is wow. So it's going to be mom wow. So, so these are, I draw these out. There's the mom with the boy. That's the M and M. That's, uh -huh. that's I'm gonna be. So what I do is once yeah. I get the ice on my bench, I'll lay it down on my bench and I'll mist it with water, and I'll freeze this to the ice. And then once it freezes to the ice, then I get my routers and I come back and I, I trace out the lines. So I can't draw that well, <laughs> not free-handed. So I, you know, I draw these out ahead of time, and I put them on paper, and then I can use my routers. So you see it tomorrow if you come back, how I do it, and um, cut them out. You can come in, and I'll keep the door shut best I can once you step though. Okay. Um, this is just basically, thank you, Mom. What I'll do is I'll cut it all out with my routers, then I'll fill it with the snow because you see when I cut ice, I, I get quite a bit of snow. And then you'll pack the snow in here and you'll water that down to let it freeze. Once it freezes, then I sand it down and you see it says, thank you mom. That will stand up and the, once the block clears up, that's going to be clear like you see in PG and then the white's going to pop out and really look good. But that's going to be a sign sitting on a base, which I've already started making what you saw in there. It's gonna sit on a base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I'm trying, this is what I'm getting now to make a base. Uh -huh. I'm not done, but I'm getting to the point that I'm getting close to the end. I gotta finish these up, finish that up, make my seafood display, and I look at my list and I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty close to being done for the BG right now. What day do you use bring them over there? I bring in the morning of the competition. I bring in the, the morning of the, uh, Mother's Day. Mor Sunday morning. Yeah. I'll have them all in here. Yeah. I'll clean all this out, of course. There'll be no more snow in here. This, this will be all filled with them wrapped in. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll clean them all up, wrap them, and stick them all in here, uh -huh. and then let them sit overnight and get nice and cold. Uh -huh. Then I'll put that box in my truck. Yeah. Then I take them frozen into that box. From that box goes to Bishop Gaston, which is a short drive. No, I know, but how do you lift them? There are so many hundred pounds. Yeah. You have a, you have, you use your, your uh, no, lift? I just use my back. That's what, you know. I, I just I don't lift full blocks of ice. Uh -huh. When I cut them, you see, I I, I, I cut the logo oh. and I cut a base. Oh, okay. So I set the base up and oh. I put the logo up with the logo on. You know, oh. so I kind of build them when I'm there because right. obviously I can't pick up a 300 pound carving by myself. So. Uh -huh. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I think I'll, I'll put the base down. I'll have these, I have it here, but you have an iron. This is what you call iron. It's a thick piece of aluminum, and I'll get it warm. You know, and when you put it, fuse them together, you'll have the base down, you take this iron, and you'll run it across the top of the, um, the, the base, then you take the ice carving, and you run it across the base. Then once the ice is kind of moving, you stick it on there, and it's still cold, so pretty much how it works. I'm get a base for this thing you all home. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be the bottom. I'll set up by 20 inches. And then that's gonna fuse on top of this. And then that's gonna go and then I'll okay. clean that up on top okay. of that. So basically uh, I've already marked it out with my teeth. Uh -huh. I got my line oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah, right here.
Bring all your tools with you, or do they have them up uh, there? I bring the necessities, you know. Yeah, the, um, you, your special. I bring a couple of these die grinders, uh -huh. resource mediums. Uh -huh. I bring a couple of these large ones, definitely the sanders, you know. But the, the beauty of these is they had to quickly change bits uh -huh. on them, so I don't have to bring other die grinders. Right. I bring a couple, then I bring all my bits in a box, and as I'm yeah. using them, I just yeah. change bits oh, of them. Oh. So I don't want to have to travel right. around my, around right. my tools. Kind of expensive. Plus, a couple years ago, I lost it. I lost the case. Some the airline lost it. No, it's my fault. Oh, I left it on the sidewalk. Oh no. I was in a hurry to get the cab. Uh -huh. You know, and me and Brian, my partner, uh -huh. were going, and we are we all checked in and we're on the plane, and you know, all of a sudden it's like, how are you going? Uh -huh. I left my case outside. Yeah, uh -huh. I did. And it was gone. Uh -huh. Probably $3,000 in the tools. It took me a while to recover that. That took a while. Okay. But that was kind of a shock. Yeah. So let's see, I want to make a base, so I'm going to come up probably. I don't want to make the base too high, because that means when I go to pick it up, I got to yeah. you know, yeah. get it even higher. So I've already got five inches there. Well, if I come up 10 inches. Yes, a nice tool because it keeps my line straight. Sort of the way you make the ice cubes too? Ice cubes are basically just kind of a bunch of these slabs right here. Uh huh. This is like a smaller oh. slab. Oh, okay. Then I got a uh, circular saw which is outside. Oh, okay. And I basically, I don't use a chainsaw with that. Oh, it's basically yeah. like a regular circular okay. saw. And I just cut them with that. Right. Then I have a miter saw and then I cut the cubes. Chop, yeah. Chop, 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 chop. yeah, but it's too difficult to. Uh,
this is what we, this is the iron, uh -huh. so put iron. bring them over in parts on Sunday and yeah. put it together. Yeah, okay. I, you know, there's no way I can take this out. Okay. Not, not, I'm not in all pieces. How's that here? 150 pounds? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering whether my can, my uh, can, whether my camera's gonna work in the cold. <laughs> I think I better get out of here. Yeah, well, I, I'm almost done. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you want to, are you done? Are you done? Freeze into the ice with a little bit of water. So, you know, it's pretty much stuck on there. I'm going to take my small die grinder, trace it all out. I do this all the yeah, time. Start again when I go to Alaska. So typically when I go to Alaska, I'm the logo and sign guy because I, I, I spend so much time doing it here in my shop and everyone else, they got the CNC machines, they just push the buttons in and in and in, but I do it by hand. So whenever we got signs to do, Stuart, make the sign. Okay. So 
what, how, how, what's the temperature in here? 14. 14 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it was cold. That's it's good. actually, I like to keep it around anything colder than that, and that's just too brittle. Keep it around 16 ish. You know, that 22 is probably optimum, you know, but it gets a little sticky for me after a while being in here, you know, because it's such a small space, you know. Um, so I keep it around 17 right now, it's, you know, in and out, but yeah. So really colder ice gets, it's not, not good. It's brittle. It's brittle. It really? cracks. It's hard. Yeah. 22 ish, 20, 22 ish is probably just about perfect, you know, but it gets a little warm in here for me, you know. So I keep it around 17. This freezer is just a little bit warmer, so it's not warm, it still stays frozen, but they have a tendency to um, clear up in here. As in there, because I'm always cutting and it's colder over there, oh. the ice stays kind of fuzzy and, and hazy. But I put them in here, you see, you can see I got quite a bit in here. This is, this is all for basic gas. This is all for Mother's Day, and I'm still working on more now. I got a gigantic mom, I got mom out of blocks, I got Happy Mother's Day and logos, I got stands and breath bases and stuff. This is just for Bishop Gaston only. And I, I, this, by the time this is all done, this is gonna be packed. So I got more to cut, I'll be cutting all day. More, more, more into the evening for sure. That's the insulated box. Uh -huh. Then I slide that in the back of my truck and then I take all my ice from here, uh -huh. put it in the back of that insulated box. And I carry it to Bishop Gaston. In that box to keep things frozen for hours. I mean, literally hours. But I don't, I'm not, I don't, it don't take me that long. Once I load my truck up, I head over there to BG, and um, I'm usually loading pretty quick, unloading and setting up. So it's a pretty quick process. So they, they actually, I've actually taken that box and driven to Myrtle Beach with ice in the back of it, uh -huh. and it's still frozen, not even, not even melted, just still frosty. So. It works pretty well. Yeah. It works pretty well. And then, you know, you throw buckets of ice in there and things like that to help help keep it, the temperature cool, but you know. Uh, this was Ice Alaska. This is the last year I was with, with Brian Connors. Um, we, he called late for work. It was a guy running, trying to catch the bus. And he's, he's running like that, trying to catch the bus and did a light pole and a, a storefront. And it did Alaskan Fish Company just so it kind of ties into the Alaskan scene, you know. And that was the octopus I did a couple years ago. First time I ever went with the octopus. That's another octopus turned a big wheel. I got plenty of pictures, but nothing, nothing's out here on the wall. This was the octopus I did a few years ago. Uh, this octopus turned the gears. Um, kind of like all spun in with the gears, and he's turning the gears. And that's with me and Steve Dean a couple of years ago, last year, as a matter of fact, called Tiger by Tail. Steve Dean is a fascinating ice carver. He's talented, super talented. Um, working on Godzilla piece. Um, what else have we got there? It's one of my badges. Cold. <laughs> Very cold. 
Um, that was a workstation that me and Brian built. Kind of, it was nice because it was snowing a lot this year. Me and Brian went to Lowe's and Home Depot and got some wood and built some wood. You can see the ice, how crystal clear it is. It's kind of a blue color, and it's got a nice white cap on top. You cut the white cap off and basically use that for other parts of it, and then once you cut that off, you have to stand the ice up. Here's the forklift picking up the ice. They're quite heavy. They're about 3,000 pounds, so there's no moving it by yourself. So when they come in, you kind of give them free range to move around and the sounds of the backing up and the smell of diesel all kind of reminds me of that. That's once you cut the white cap off see how clear it is. And it's about it's about a six foot tall. That's a little smaller there. This is the ice pad that we did for the cityscape. Um, you want to get a nice level ground. A lot of guys do that. They'll carve away the snow because the ground's not level and you make a nice base to put the ice on so you get a nice sturdy base that way the ice you can see right there is always sitting on the ice and it's not wobbly and leaning um, you see it right there with the base on it of course you get a forklift and pick up the cute the blocks and put them on there um, and what else we got to say about that that's pretty much it and that's where we're kind of drawing out and designing parts of the aspect you kind of look into the ice and take out what you want and they're starting to cut the ice and sh um, shaping it down. You know, get a big chainsaw. That's going to be the storefront right there. Kind of cut it down a little bit. Um, you can see it coming together. We did a lot of homework and did a lot of pre-drawing the um, templates. And you put the templates on there. That was actually a very ingenious idea that we came up with about cutting into the white ice and getting the clear ice for the window storefronts. That was kind of cool. You know, and it's the man. Brian was working on the man. Work hours of the night. There it's pretty late, you can tell. It's dark. They're back there in the morning time again. Back at it again. Um, Brian's working down there, working on his, his man. Um, what else I gotta say? He's good. We put the man in place, the fish is on top. Um, what else we gotta say about that? He's got the hand on him. You see, he got the dog, had to. At the fire hydrant hiking his leg up like he's peeing on the fire hydrant that's kind of a little funny aspect of it the light pole going up in the sky what else so yeah what's the temperature there uh it's usually in the negatives but i can't really remember that year but you know it definitely tells you don't want it too cold because your eyes is too hard to carve you know Well, that was the, our late for work. Um, it's pretty cold there, you can see. Um, I think that year it wasn't too terribly cold, but it was probably in the um, low teens, maybe. You know, so you, don't, you can't get the ice too cold because it doesn't carve well. Um, the, the colder it is, it wants to crack. So you want it the ice somewhat like we keep it in our freezers somewhere. It's, where it's kind of in the 20s would be great, you know, so we get a nice tempered ice. Um, but you don't want it warm, you don't want the ice melting, but you don't want it sticky either. It's kind of a, 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 a hodgepodge of what you need and what you want, you know, so.